Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today Bitcoin is sitting at around 113K, currently testing that short-term holder cost basis. And I know what you're thinking. We've been talking about this level for, for weeks now. So I want to show you something a little different today. So instead of just talking about whether Bitcoin is above or, or below these, these levels on chain, I want to answer a more important, important question. So who is actually selling, moving coins on, on chain right now? Because not all Bitcoin holders are, are created equal. You know, a six month holder selling is very different from a from a five year holder selling. And today I'm going to show you exactly which age groups are moving coins, where they bought them and what that tells us about the current market structure that we're in. Plus, I'm going to show you a new metric that is on the website called the apparent demand that reveals whether basically buyers are strong enough to, to sort of absorb the supply that's hitting the market. So let's dive straight into the chart. So like I said, Bitcoin's currently at 113K, basically currently testing this, this level of, of around 113K, the short-term roller cost basis. And we've been consolidating in this sort of range from 115 to 103 for quite some time now. And I, I think we'll still continue to consolidate around this range until we we notably and, and durably break above this level and pass around 120K, I would say, and then start to go to new all-time highs if that happens. So the first major line of support, the one that, that truly does matter, in my opinion, is the MVRV mean. And that's the basically the Bitcoin's fair value uh, baseline on, on chain, right? So if we take a look at the MVRV, uh, that's, the, that's this chart right here. This can basically show us whether or not Bitcoin is trading above or below its overall market mean. And currently that's sitting around 102K and Bitcoin's currently at 113K. So in my opinion, as long as we're above 102K, the bull market structure is intact in my opinion. So instead of repeating uh, the same analysis we've been talking about for, for quite some time, I want to dive deeper into the data and show you who's actually moving the coins right now on chain because context matters in, in terms of who's buying and who's selling, right? So first, let's let's look at this new chart called the apparent demand. And so this is the this is this is basically measuring whether new demand, new buyers coming into Bitcoin are, are strong enough to absorb the ongoing supply from both number one mining and number two long term term holder distribution. So this indicator, by the way, was created by uh, by the engineers over at Crypto Quant, and I've managed to recreate it with my own uh, on-chain data. So the calculation is is pretty simple. So we take the new issuance of Bitcoin from miners. That's about 900 Bitcoin per day right now. And that's calculated by the, the 144 mined blocks daily by the current block reward of, of 3.125 BTC. So then we're subtracting the change in supply of coins that have been inactive for over a year. So over 100 over 365 days right so when you see these green bars positive apparent demand that means essentially buyers are strong enough to absorb both the new mining supply and whatever long-term holders are are basically distributing or moving out of their wallet so that's typically market strength right and then on the on the flip side when you see when you see red bars negative apparent demand that typically means demand is too weak to absorb the supply so more bitcoin is hitting the market than buyers can can sort of soak up right so and right now re looking at recent data we're seeing slightly negative apparent demand on a on a smoothing basis but if we look at it on a raw uh basis we are seeing somewhat of a positive apparent demand not by much but over a longer time frame when we apply that sort of moving average we are seeing an overall negative net positive or negative net positive apparent demand so on a on a longer term time frame it is negative with a slight uh it's slightly going up to positive uh, uh momentum but but not by much in terms of the absolute outflows it isn't much compared to what we've seen in the past so when we actually get down below key on chain support levels and technical analysis levels you'll typically start to see like we see in 2021, we typically start to see apparent demand start to, to to pretty much go from major positive levels to major negative levels when we go below these these major moving averages. So if we're when for example we're below the MVRV mean, 
I think we first went below it at around 50, 45 K um, last cycle. And currently, yeah, so, so we saw a basically big negative uh, outflow in apparent demand right as we fell below the MVRV mean, right? So typically uh, you'll start to see that, that occur in bear markets. Right now we haven't seen that amount of absolute negativity on that on that on on this metric right so this metric is important because it it basically shows you know whether this consolidation phase is happening because of of weak demand which would be a bit concerning or just normal you know profit taking being absorbed by by healthy demand like we saw in in the run-ups during the first all-time high of 72k and then the secondary one up to 100k we saw a relatively positive apparent demand but when buyers couldn't soak up all the supply that was being in, that was being you know basically long-term holders started selling at these points then we started flipping back over into negative apparent demand and then buyers stepped in and took it back to new all-time highs right so what i'm seeing right now is a mix of sort of both there there are many long-term holders taking profits offloading bitcoins but a lot of that demand is still being bought up by new holders, ETFs, treasury companies, et cetera, short-term holders. And here's where it gets interesting. So apparent demand tells us if supply is being absorbed, but it doesn't necessarily tell us who is creating that supply, right? So that's what we're about to look at right now. This is the this is a new another new chart called the revived supply by age. So we can either look at it on a combined basis or an individual basis. So this shows us coins that previously have been dormant that are being spent. So broken down by how long these coins have been sitting idle. So we can see different age cohorts here from six months to one year, one year to two year, two year to three years, et cetera, all the way up to 10 plus years, right? And each color band shows you where or when the coins from the those age groups are moving, right? So why does this chart matter? So because behavior is, is very different from uh, sorry, depending on how long, you know, someone has held their Bitcoin, uh, someone who's held their Bitcoin from six months ago and is selling now, they might be taking, you know, a small profit or cutting some losses, depending on what the price is doing compared to someone who who is selling, uh, you know, who bought five years ago and is selling now. That's a different story. They're probably making you know massive profits as those coins have have a lot more weight. And it's also much rarer to see older coins move. As typically we see on chain that coins above seven years are, are actually normally lost, but you know, obviously some come back to the market. So let's take a look at what's happening right now on an overall combined total supply uh, based on the realized on the revived supply chart coins um, greater than. So the total supply is actually going uh, it's still going up. So the total revived supply that's being brought on to the market is still going up on a 90 day EMA. But if we sort of look at it from an individual basis, let's just take a look at it from uh, some from the six months to one year. That's typically uh, that has been going up a little bit, but it has been slowing down quite some quite a bit as we go into these lower prices. You know, these shorter term holders aren't willing to sell uh, their coins for 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 example, if they bought up up at 126k or 120k, as we're going near 100k, 106k, they're not willing to sell as much. So this ratio naturally goes down a bit. We can see you know mild distributions uh, around 20,000 Bitcoin, 10,000 Bitcoin here and there. You can see in in December and in January we saw major outflows, uh, major outflows from these lower term time frame holders. And on any given day, you can see these distributions playing out and moving from these wallets, right? So you can typically see during market euphoria phases. Let me just put a come. Let me just combine them all and just show you guys. So typically during market euphoria phases, you can see uh, basically when this metric starts to peak, you can typically that can typically mark local consolidation phases or market cycle tops, right? And you can also you can also see from 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 the individual basis uh, you can see it from one year to two years through two year to three years three year to five years so you can see it from all these different angles so what's interesting is that most of the revived supply is actually coming from the younger cohorts for, so six months to to two years old so that, those are the people who bought during the cycle not you know a, ancient whales who bought at 
at a thousand dollars or so right so this is interesting you can also see the the uh, revived supply back in um back in july when we saw that big whale sell around eighty thousand bitcoin and the market pretty much went to new all-time highs after that you can you can see this in this metric right so that's pretty cool um you know so so this is a cool metric but i also want to talk about another metric which adds a bit more context to what i've been talking about today which is called the holder realized prices okay so this is showing the average cost basis for every age cohort that we just looked at right uh, not every but um it, it basically breaks it down a little bit more right so you can see from what zero day to from zero to 24 hours one day to one week so on and so forth and this shows you the average cost basis for every age cohort from you know brand new holders who bought yesterday to to diamond hands who've been holding for for 10 plus years and each line here represents where that age group last moved their coins on chain and their average cost basis so you can see the exact cost basis for for all these holders and so right now bitcoin is at 113k so let's see which of these holders are, are in profit and who's underwater right so you can see the the uh let's just look at it individually so zero to one days they're in loss right now so their average cost base is around 114k bitcoin's at 113 one day to one week they are currently in profit actually wow so their average cost base is at 109k and the one week to one month uh currently at loss around two thousand dollars on average one week to one month to three months they are currently at loss as well three months to six months and this is where it gets uh you know we get deeper into the age bands they get older these are the people who have been holding for a bit longer right so buying at around these dips here and then perhaps buying a little bit above uh buying these dips and, and whatnot so their their average cost basis are around 109k for the three month to six month six month to 12 months that's at 93k and you can see typically when you go uh down further and further of, on these longer term cohorts their their average cost basis is much lower right so that's because you know they're sitting on massive gains and yet they're not starting we're, we're still not seeing basically significant sales from those people at least not yet on the real on the revived supply by age group so typically you can you can see a, a decent amount from the shorter term uh, individuals but when we look at it from for example the two year to three year we haven't yet seen major outflows from these holders besides the the 10 year plus which we did see quite a bit of distribution from those levels so this is interesting as well so we can we can look at it from another uh we can take this another step uh further basically and look at the long-term holder realized profit to loss ratio where we can actually see the actual profits being locked on chain when these coins you know are being actually moved from the revived supply and you can typically see that this marks major distribution phases in in bitcoin's history and this is basically logarithmic growth so you, you can typically note that this goes deeply into the green here as we get closer and closer to the all-time high this basically shows you that you know these the profits or the losses on any given day can be logarithmic in terms of the actual realized profits that these long-term holders are realizing on chain just because of of their their incredibly low average cost basis right so we can see in the actual peak in November of 2021 that this actually spiked up to the to around the range highs here and you can see this in 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 all different prior cycles right so in 2013 in in 20 in the actual peak in 2013 in the distribution phase or the consolidation phase in 2013 this started going into the negative meaning long-term holders started realizing losses on chain which is actually, actually quite rare and only happens during the start of of bear market so you can you can see right as we started to realize losses that that marked the end of that bull market in 2017. you can see in the con summer consolidation event of 2021 that we started realizing losses and this ratio actually fell down below from these range highs into these sort of range lows here right around 50k which then went back up to around um it bounced a little bit up but hit a lower high right and then it we quickly thereafter saw the dump into the summer and then right we we got a, another all-time high so this cycle we've seen sort of 
multiple phases where long-term holders start to realize profits on chain. We saw it notably in the first all-time high at 73, 74K. And then we consolidated for a bit and hit uh, these negative readings here. Then when we hit 100K for the first time, we also saw this re ratio hit the range highs. And then during this entire phase here, from around 110K to 126K, we also saw these high readings, right? And right now we actually haven't seen any negative readings, meaning long-term rollers have not realized any losses on chain, which is healthy in my opinion. That is good and that is what you wanna see. I would say if this does go negative, it doesn't necessarily mean that the cycle's over just because we've seen it happen and, and then subsequently go to new all-time highs, right? So overall, you know, these these couple charts that we've looked at today paint a healthy picture of, of, a, of a decent pullback from the all-time high and what I would call a, a lengthy consolidation phase from here. And as long as Bitcoin remains above the MVRV mean at around 102K, which is our major support level, I still think the bull market structure is intact. Unless you get, you know, two to three weekly closes, hold it as resistance, right? That would mean a, a different story, right? That, that would mean Bitcoin's bear market is likely in, in my opinion. But throughout the cycle, this level has marked major support and resistance for Bitcoin this cycle. You know, we've seen it, we've seen it hold at around 56K, at around 79K, and currently it's sitting around 102K. And if we break below and can't reclaim it, then that, that's when I would start to, you know, reassess the bull market case because that would mean, you know, Bitcoin is trading below its average aggregate cost basis, below what everyone paid for their coins. And that typically doesn't happen in bull markets. You can sometimes dip below it, but you normally, you know, hold a support and go back above it. So all these charts are available for 100% free at chartinspect.com. You can go and track them, uh, track the day yourself and see what the story is telling you. Thanks for watching. Stay patient during this consolidation event and uh, drop a comment, like, subscribe if this content helped you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.